<laughs> now, go ahead. One quick question. Um, let's say that the um, those wonderful constituents out here agree to say yes, we will uh, agree to vote on continuing the splash funding. How long? What's the duration of the time that things will actually be implemented? And what will come first? Transportation, sidewalks, technology. What's the time frame? We're going to make that decision. Us. The, okay. the community and the county in this list that we are preparing. Okay. But you also got to be vigilant or, or, or knowledgeable of the fact that if we're asking you to fund a project in 2015, when we start collecting, we have to collect that money mm -hmm. before we can build. Correct. So that could push back time in terms of when a project is even started or completed. So. <coughs> because we have some projects now in the <coughs> 04 and 09 that have not been uh, even started yet. Due to funding? Well, again, uh, I can't answer <coughs> for my predecessors, but one thing I can agree with them on is, you know, with the decline in the digest, you know, our budget, shrinking budget, that if we build a building such as a, a, another recreation center, we've got to hire people to run. Mm -hmm. That means we have to dip in the budget because we can't use plus money to fund right. salaries. So, got to sit on it. Well, I would think you know that was the reason. Sit on it until we get in a better position and then build it out. But you know you got to be smart about it because if you start hiring people and and, and dipping into your your, uh, your general fund, you're gonna have problems because you gotta have present a balanced budget. What's our population of as to date in Clayton County? I believe it's right around 266. Okay. But let me add one thing to your point, though. One of the things that's different in this program that the chairman made sure that we we're a little more vigilant on is that they made sure that as we're making requests from the county side in order to build out these capital facilities, they've also asked the question, what will it take to sustain it? And so there's kind of a difference from our other old programs is that if you're going to build a building and it's going to be 15,000 square feet and the capital cost for that is $10 million, then the fiscal budget, how much money will it take to run that facility each year so that ultimately you can make decisions about whether or not it's even a project you need to put on the list or whether or not that's a project that needs to be reprioritized at the bottom of the list because you don't have the money to sustain it. And so part of that transparency and part of that question about what we're through a lot of these projects, which you will hear different from this program than what you probably haven't heard in previous SPLOS programs is that you hear us talk about the sustainability of that facility or that program so you know you get a better sense of you know do we have the funds in the general fund to support it um, so I concur with you that's that was been that's been one of the challenges and one of the major questions a lot of the citizens have asked is that we have this 2015 program but we still have the 04 and 09 that still hadn't been completed where are we on that and so we're trying to ensure that you know, one, there's a new, there's a website, there's a SPLOS website that talks about the projects, one. And then secondly, as we get into this new program, if the citizens approve it, then ultimately you should be able to see, you know, what's the timeline associated with sustaining that program over a period of time. And another misconception oftentimes is that because it was passed in 2015, then it should be built in 2016. And, 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 and that's not a reality either. You know, um, you have to collect the funds and you very well not be, may not be to 2020. But I think we all agree that it shouldn't be 10 years before you build it. Yeah, upgrade our technology. I truly concur. I agree. Okay. Right. Now, it's, it's, it's the holidays. What do you want to wrap in a bow? <laughs> what do you want to wrap in a bow? Um, I'm not exactly talking about what we're going to wrap in a bow, but to uh, piggyback off of Mayor Burke's um, comment about trying to figure out what project um, dealing with technology that we can focus on, because they're, uh, with the splots being driven uh, by um, tax dollars, that means that more people have to be purchasing and spending money in the county. And if we're able to um, hone in on um, some kind of special special area or specialty, mm -hmm. then that's going to drive the uh, purchase power up in the county, then which will open up the uh, access and opportunity for us to be able to fund all the other stuff that we have on the table. So kind of looking at, like you said earlier, kind of from an economic development uh, perspective, is what what and I don't have the answer to it. Um, that's not my area of specialty as far as in the technology, but mm -hmm. I can see where the opportunity is very great, and I think that this is a prime time to maximize on the opportunity because we have such a great jewel 
uh, with the airports in there uh, in our county and with um, the potential opening up of uh, down in Savannah of, of the port because those trucks and everything are coming up 75 and they're coming straight through Clayton County. So we got to go, you know, start putting something in place now so that we can maybe maximize. So let's stay ahead of the curve in technology. Yes. Find an opportunity which we can go forward with. And that's a great idea. That's a, that's, that's a great thought. I know one of the up and coming areas is still chip manufacturing and chip processing. That is driving the market. Right now, the chip manufacturing is so far ahead, they don't have what's called input output devices to keep up with them. So they don't have drives. They don't have uh, uh, some of the mobile devices. All of these can't keep up with them. These are all golden opportunities mm -hmm. to get out and begin to create some kind of market which could, could sustain and grow our economy here. Questions? I know. Mm -hmm. I know we want something. Let's go. I'm yes, Carl sir. Kelly from Riverdale. Um, Mayor Burke mentioned public-private partnerships and, and how you can leverage some of this lost money by creating those public-private partnerships and allow the private part of it to be profitable, which is what they're there for. My question is, can the lost money be leveraged uh, by using it as a local match to obtain grants to, to do larger projects. We have a $100 million project. Uh, we, we need to do a 20% match, uh, and, and there's $80 million of federal money available. Can the SPLOS money be used for that local match? Yes. yes. Um, let me give you a couple of examples on the road side of stuff. Um, <clears throat> there's a project that we've been working on for several years now. Um, up in the Mountain View area, adjacent to Hartsville um, Airport. We were able to start a deal with Georgia DOT and partner with them on this transportation project. The county is investing through your SWAS program upwards of $15 million to acquire the runway for this project. In return, we're going to get a 50 to $60 million road improvement project in the area. Um, for y'all who know Mountain View, this is the forgotten land uh, next to the airport, just immediately to the east of it. It's been vacant. It's right there at, at the doorstep of the airport. This project would not have been possible without the SPLOS program to pay out a portion of it. Once this project comes online, I think it's supposed to break ground late next year. Um, after about two or three years of building it, it's going to redefine that area. It's going to open up land for for private investors to come in and build buildings and build um, whatever type of commercial properties they want. Um, that is a great example of what we're looking at. Um, now there's a couple other road projects, I don't want to bore us with road projects, but there's a couple other road projects in the county that we are currently working on that we leverage the same thing. Um, it might be a widening of Anvil Block Road in a residential area because the road's over capacity now. Um, it doesn't have the economic potential as this one in Mountain View, but it satisfies another need. And the county's paying about 20% and the state's paying about 80% through state and federal funds. So there's that opportunity all around us and that's a great use of these funds. The, the one caveat with it is we have to go by the schedules the federal and the state government um, provide us. And sometimes it's not as quick as we might want it to be. But a little patience and we'll get there and these much needed improvements will be out there. And if we had to flip the whole bill ourselves and pay 100%, we, we wouldn't be able to do is that everything that we, we have to be able to do. So how do you so, define that in a SPLOS, as a SPLOS project? Is that earmarked in transportation or? Uh, yes, transportation? if it's on our transportation side, um, I'm sure Dietrich probably has some grant funding opportunities and we have other other areas. I think one of the libraries that was built under this loss had a significant portion of either state or federal funding in it. It would be throwing a need on the table, us looking at it, uh, some of the projects we already have in the planning stages that we would like to see uh, potentially included in here. We have that relationship. We can fast tracked it a lot further than Georgia DOT has on their schedule right now. So a, again, the idea is throw your ideas on the table. Um, we, we, that's what we do. We, we work with these ideas after you um, vet them to us and we try to match up the funding as best we can. It might be 100% SPLOS funding is what we feel is the best for that project. It might be utilizing as a match to get a greater pot of money in the end. 
and this won't be the last time that you'll have an opportunity to voice your opinion. Uh, we're going to try to do this throughout the county until it's time to vote because we really want to hear from you. Spread the word, tell folks as you see the flyers come up and as we spread the word that um, there will be additional meetings. Very important that we get your citizens input. Uh, tell them about the different level, the projects. I know they're talking about little small in, uh, independent ones, but what is it, tier one and tier two projects? So they might give you some feedback in terms of seeing something on a larger scale. Okay. Um, not to get too deep into the Georgia Code on what defines splosses and what projects are eligible or not. Um, some of the language in the law, the cities get a certain amount of money um, or a certain percentage to do projects they want to do, um, even though it's a county tax program. And the county gets usually the majority of it. There are big projects, countywide projects that we, it's a different way we look at the funding. It, it doesn't um, get divvied up amongst the cities and the counties. It gets funded by the county in general, everyone. Um, the justice complex, what was funded several years ago, is a great example of that. The juvenile justice, the, the building that was added on, is a great example of that. That was funded from your 2009 program. That was a top priority of the 09 program. That got the money off the top before everything else did. Uh, there's major projects. A county administration building would be possible. A, a jail complex, if we had need for that, would be possible to come off this top. Um, there's other projects uh, that we could look at that have countywide impact that uh, to a degree can come off the top before the, the cities and the county kind of divide up to satisfy their individual needs. Uh, regional park systems are fit there's mode. Some transportation projects were fit there's mode. It, it, it's kind of a region countywide impact of who's going to reap the benefits of this program. Where conversely, putting a, um, I'll do one of my examples, uh, a sidewalk down in Lovejoy. Well, I don't know how much benefit someone in College Park or Forest Park is going to get from that particular sidewalk. But doing a transit system countywide, buying the buses and stuff like that could be applied across the board. So there, there are big ideas. Uh, you can have game changers if you want to coin a phrase. What will move this county forward? What will redefine where we need to be? Uh, Mayor Burke mentioned a, a medical complex. Well, I mean, that's, that's thinking large. Um, that's a possibility. Um, after our county administration building, I mean, we, we could do, um, when the Falcons were talking about moving, I mean, there was a thrown on the table about, hey, come build in this Mountain View area or your stadium. There's, there's big ideas like that that start with the citizens. That's how it starts with. So there's, there's potentials for these big projects, I mean, as well as these small little things here and there. Um, that's where we need your input so our elected officials can make that decision on what fits the mode and the needs of the community the best. Yes. Uh, my name is Ann Keith. I'm from Forest Park. Uh, one of the things I, I would like to see us really concentrate on is what we kind of spoke about before. I think you're speaking of the Colony Road portal, I hope, when you're talking yes, about the Mountain View. Yes, ma'am. I mean, as long as I can remember, people have been talking about building there. And so I'm excited to hear that. Maybe Coming. that's getting ready to happen. Yes, ma'am. Because I think that'll make a big difference. But one thing that um, I think Mayor Burke brought up, I too feel like a stepchild. Clay County, we have no nice hotels in our county, yet the International Airport rides right into Forest Park and Oak Dixie. Why do we have nice hotels? Why aren't we as the commissioner's office or our citizens? I always say I'll volunteer to be on the group to promote our town. Why aren't we out pushing the Hyatt hotels and folks like that to come over on the corner and say, you know, let's build right here on Grant Parkway, those kind of places. Absolutely. Like for the economy to grow, that to me is how we're all gonna get our jobs and how we're gonna grow is for us to bring those kind of- and I agree with you 100%. Uh, we have missed opportunities in the past. 
but with this new administration, we're not worried about the past. What are we going to do about it today? Right. And that's what we're working on. So I appreciate that. And just know, we are we have an aggressive economic development plan that we've been pushing forward. I got great directors that's that's working to come up with these ideas and working in partnership with the state to, to develop this county further. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, they stripped us over the years, but now it's time for us to stand our grand, ground and say, hey. Clayton County is the gem of the South Side, if not the state, and we're going to make sure that the state knows about it. Mm -hmm. But we collectively got to make that happen. Government can't do it all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to work together. We have to, we have to uh, support initiatives that's going to make us look good. I don't want any business to come to Clayton County just to say we got a business. I want quality. I want quality hotels. I want quality restaurants. I want something you know we need we need quality businesses here and that's what we're out trying to solicit we got to give them something we have to give those businesses a reason to come to Clayton County we have the location but we also have to work with them on the flip side to say hey this is a great opportunity for you you come here we're gonna work and we're gonna make sure that you're successful well, not make sure but do our best to make sure you're you're successful but that's where the citizens come to play instead of jumping up and running to the cab county the buckhead we need to reinvest our dollars in Clayton County, support our businesses here. If a major restaurant or hotel comes here, we got to make sure that we support them. And it's as simple as that. If they build and we support, then they're, if it's a large company, they're going to say, hey, you know, Microsoft will tell Apple, hey, look, at, look what's going on in Clayton County. Come on down. Great opportunity here. And that's how you start building business. But we have to take part in ownership in that as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. Um, Jeff mentioning about big projects. I've been hearing that there's been a request from one of the departments, or maybe from the city of Mora, um, it's been asked if the office is true or not, for a $40 million either convocation center or some kind of multi event center. What kind? Like a convocation or, or a multi event center. A civic center. There's been kicking around ideas. And again, it's ideas that we're kicking around like this but one that idea one of those ideas is uh, for our uh, civic center to be built in Clayton County uh, right now what you see the school system doing on graduations they'll jump up and go downtown mm -hmm. spend all that money downtown and we're missing out on that revenue here in Clayton County and it's simply because they don't have a facility large enough to hold graduations in. That, that, is the that has been mentioned, yes. That has been thrown out there. And again, it's information. We're putting it on the list. Um, and that's all we're doing, and inventing it out. That's one of those tier one or two, tier two projects that the cities can uh, buy into as well. So yes, that's, a, that's one of the large projects that has been discussed. Um, I, I would think we need to take the opportunity. I mean, we have citizens in this room. I mean, what do y'all think about that idea? I think that'd be great. Um, if I can, uh, that particular project, uh, Civic Center, they have, uh, where's the, um, Tyler Perry uses this down in Cobb County all the time. The, the uh, Cobb uh, Energy Center. Cobb Energy Center. Great Something facility. Something to that effect, mm -hmm. that they can do uh, graduations and movies and theaters and play. We got to think big, so we're not looking at a, a, a civic center that's only going to hold this audience. But you got to you, you got to keep in mind also that hey, graduation is one part of it. It has to be sustainable. It has to be something in that in that center year round. Exactly. And that's why you got to have it nice where they have plays and other things like that. And like the mayor said, we're right off a major corridor, mm -hmm. south of the airport. Which yeah, if you have, have a to go with something of that major mm -hmm. for our first project as a county. You were talking a minute ago about the different county, different cities getting part of the SPLOS. Mm -hmm. And if all those cities came together and say, Chairman, we need to do a major project that brings attention to us, and then we do our little individual projects after we see this ball mm -hmm. running. So let's do a Cobb Energy Center or a Clayton County Energy Center that has the ability to do various different things throughout the year, graduations, Absolutely. theater, and so right. forth. Mm -hmm. We got that attention, and mm -hmm. now we got that revenue going. We already put jobs in there. Things are beginning to happen, but if we're looking for small, nothing's there small, okay? Transportation is a huge thing. 
but transportation is a personal thing and we need it. But however, we still need to bring attention that brings other attention to us. Mm -hmm. So we got to decide what's most important. Do we want to bring more attention to us to grow us or do we want a personal issue to be resolved? And transportation is a huge issue. It's a huge issue, so don't think I'm dismissing that. But we have to go bigger so that we can bring other businesses here for what we're doing. People are using the Cobb Energy Center all the time. You, all you hear on the radio is Cobb Energy Center, Cobb Energy Center. They're not talking about Clayton Art Center. I think, and this is the form we have to do this. This is our chairman, okay, these are our directors. We have got to begin to say what we want. There is no, I, there is no bad idea. There is no bad idea. We put it forth, we want to try to begin to try to move with it and say, Chairman, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to see. Take us. We put our trust in these individuals to take us forward. And I think that's what we have to do. We have to begin to let them take us forward, but we've got to give them ideas and tell them where we want to go. Okay. We have to begin to tell them where we want to go. Questions? No, but I will say I agree to some some type of center like a civic center. As long as it's going to be high technology, uh, the latest status art our technology or center like that, and also maybe picking back on the uh, solar uh, concept, because that's one of the still biggest thing that's still going on. So if we can be something truly unique out of the box, that's saying, hey, it's not here in the southern region uh, from Alabama, Florida, Mississippi, whatever cases, like, yes, this is the place to come. Exactly. Then, yes, I'm all for it, but if it's going to be it's something to be quality. Well, Again, no, we're not doing, we're not doing yeah. that, that subpar stuff anymore. Right. You know, I'm yeah. one vote, though. But, I understand that. But that being said, my intention is not to bring anything up. A civic center or something like that where you can do plays, major plays and stuff like that, everything stops at I-20. Mm -hmm. North. Mm -hmm. Cobb County, uh, not Cobb County, uh, all these counties that suffer south of I-20 mm -hmm. don't have a facility like Correct. that they, they can utilize. They go to the Fox Theater, the Cobb mm -hmm. Energy, and these other places. Now guess what, you got a quality five star, four star, whatever you call it, uh, event center here on the south side. Traffic is much less. Mm -hmm. Why not come here? So what do we want to see? What do we want to see? You just spoke of it. You know, and just the, the um, Sanford Center over here off of um, Rainbow Drive. Port of Port Sanford. Nice theater, but it didn't meet the need to bring major production, major mm -hmm. shows there. Uh, they use it for smaller uh, events and, and so forth. Great idea, small idea. Yeah. And so we can't go small. We got to go so that we draw that attention. Absolutely. So that we can begin to do something. You know, and of course, the, the building materials and aesthetics has got to be a part of that project so that we can really bring that attention. But we have been suffering with just trickling the box. We're, 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 we're just lucky we're still here. Okay, I have, I, here. I have an idea. We've got the, we've got the Women's Division II Pass National Championship in our county. The only women's basketball team in Georgia to win a national championship resides in Clayton County. Division two sports is huge, huge idea. Let's create some type of complex that can begin to bring those national division two events here. Well, that's what it, um, Civic Center um, can uh, can be the host, just like sure, in yeah. Phillips Arena, mm -hmm. where it's able to, they're able to Trans transform Correct. whatever the uh, floor is. Seven, eight thousand seats. We're, uh, we're talking basketball. We're talking football. Soccer. We're talking soccer lacrosse we're talking we're talking national sports that are put on at very large scales and they travel the country to do that and division two is looking for a home if they're looking for a home baseball they're looking for a home this is a baseball state believe it or not i did didn't claim state too they just hosted the also the regional. Regional. Also the regional. Right. In fact, by the selfish. And their gym, right? In their gym. Yeah. In their gym, correct. I thought that was a small show, about a thousand people or something. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but not only that, but you have opportunity. <laughs> you, you would have opportunity to bring conventions here yeah. as well. Exactly. And just think about it. Rails Business Airport, you get out and you can be somewhere in this area in five, ten minutes. 
why shouldn't that be attractive to you? Location, location, location. Yes. Question. Hello, Ms. Jones Carl. Uh, since you're talking about this type of facility, um, where would the location be? Have you? No, because it's not, I mean, we're just kicking around the idea. But it would have to be somewhere where it's easily accessible. That's the only way it works. Uh, where Number one, it can be seen. And number two, you can jump off the interstate somewhere and get to it in just a matter of seconds or minutes. We know we have a space. Yeah. Uh -huh. We'll make that possible space. Oh, absolutely. Possible. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Let's keep it going. Yes, sir. When, when this goes before the voters to vote on the squads, there is a specific list of projects. Those projects are not prioritized in any way, it's just a list of projects. I have really three related questions. How are those prior projects prioritized? Who sets those priorities? What happens if there's not enough money collected through the SPLOS to fund all of the projects? Which projects fall off at the bottom? And the third question is, if a project is deemed urgent or particularly important, is it possible to go get bond money to, um, that is based on the revenue coming from the SPLOST in order to raise that project to the top of the list? So yeah. start with, I think you should start with first, what is a level one project and what happens with all the other projects? Um, the level ones, which uh, would be like a jail again, that type of complex, uh, typically they come off the top. Um, the, the actual order of it and the priority is something the board commissioners would be setting. Um, in some of the previous flosses, it wasn't a, a top issue in the law that that had to be done. Um, but with some changes in the law over the year, we're going to have to identify a, a relative priority. Um, the, definitely the ability to deliver the bigger projects depends on the city's buy-ins um, in an intergovernment agreement between the cities and the county to, to dictate what order the projects go in. Um, I think that addresses the first question. Question two is or if a project Wait, not 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 money money on that list and that's a good question the right. money's not there what happens um the state law tells you you can't um abandon a project you can reduce the scope but you can't do away with it uh you can come forward with additional funding from another another source whether it's general fund right. um, grants it, it there's also a potential of doing a new SPLOS to help pick up the, the where the, this one underperformed. But you can't say, <laughs> I can't, I'm not doing it. Um, you, you just can't walk away from something like that. It's a commitment, it's a contract in a way with the public that we're going to deliver these projects. Um, it's a big concern about, especially in the economic times we have now, I mean, we have financial people forecasting these things. Uh, who would have thought we were dipped as low as we did though um, in our economy? But hopefully it's a conservative estimate on the dollar value we are going to collect and the projects will be able to be delivered. But that's something we constantly we have to look at. we got to remember, it's a plan. I mean, a plan by nature is going to change. Um, it, it grows, it massages as, as things get, come to fruition. So it, it's a planning step. Um, the third question about can you advance a project through bonding? Yes, you can. Uh, Double-edged sword, though. Uh, the county has not chosen to do that on the last couple SPLOS programs. Um, basically, in a nutshell, what you do is you go secure a, a big loan. In, in common language, you secure a big loan, and you pledge to pay it back off of the revenue of the SPLOS, just like you would do a mortgage. You pledge off of your income to pay off the mortgage over so many years. That's what you do under bonding. Um, the, the issue or the concern on that is how much do you bond, the amount of money you, you say you're going to borrow up front to go ahead and, and do a project, and how well do you believe that you're going to receive the, the financial returns of the SPLOS program. 
Um, it's a big concern. It, it puts the county out there, and the county only has a certain amount of bonding capacity. But uh, that is a potential. It's something that will be discussed once the project list is, is further defined by the board commissioners, um, whether the county wants to bond it or not. And that's a valid question because it's all contingent on collections of that exactly. penny. If, let's just say we set a project, South Lake Mall closes tomorrow. That's a lot of money that we won't be able to collect on. Mm -hmm. So that would severely affect what projects we can feasibly build. So again, to your point, that is a, a great concern. That's why we gotta be logical and reasonable about our projects and how we vet that and what we can reasonably build. And his last portion of that was how are those projects prioritized? How will they be prioritized? Uh, he answered that as an answer. Oh, he did? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, and Keith, and, um, I'm just curious about with this FOSH fund, uh, the interesting joint efforts with uh, Georgia Agriculture at the Forest Park Farmers Market, State Farmers Market, and updating the Farmers Market to be something like the DeKalb Farmers Market or Pikes Peak? Or I think they already have that underway. <laughs> I think the state has pledged some money to it. There's been a lot of efforts, um, planning efforts over the last several years um, through the city of Forest Park since it resi resides in their city boundaries. Um, but I do believe they, the state's come to the table recently mm -hmm. with, with some financial um, backing on re revamping the whole complex. Absolutely. Um, so it's going to look a whole lot better. Yes. Um, I. I would refer you to the city because I think they're really a partner in it. Well, I've been involved in oh. the meetings and everything, okay. but I haven't heard this update. And I think that... It's just something we're all dreaming about, nothing's happening. So correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't uh, that the largest farmer's market in, in, the, in the country? Mm -hmm. The one in Forest Park? I don't know. Yeah, I believe good. somebody told me that's the largest one in the country. But I think that would bring a lot of business if it was yeah. more people-friendly and weather you know, uh, friendly. Yeah, but see, to my point is nobody knows that. And if it's built up and looks the right. part, yeah. and it's we have the world's largest airport, world, the country's largest <coughs> farmer's market, and we're not capitali capitalizing on that. Mm -hmm. We gotta do a bit better job. Uh, a uh, better job. Definitely, we, we will record a comment, and since the mayor left, we will reach out to him and see where it stands on the Forest Park side. We're not capitalizing on the fact that Forest Park was, got the bronze award from the U.S. News this year, too. Mm. Or three of our schools got the best schools in the country. Hey! Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Since Clay County had such bad uh, news on our school system. And the school system, that's really is, is hurting us in terms of our growth also. Yeah. And I don't think it's but all perception. Like yeah, and that's perception. So, yes, sir. Um, Jeff, is there any possibility that some of the projects that, that didn't make it through the T squash last year? And I'm not talking about like, I mean, I know bus service was on there. Um, I mean, you guys are running on bus service, but stuff like you know, the arterial, super highway, mm -hmm. or the stop Jones for a minute. Are you guys looking at putting those on there? We are. Um, I don't know if the, that super arterial concept um, will be a viable project for this initiative just because the cost of that would take this whole SPOS program and then some. Um, and I, I don't think that's the point of it right now. Um, but some of the um, other widening projects, the initiatives are definitely possibilities. Um, I mean, they were identified in our transportation plan. Uh, anything's possible uh, on the transportation side. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I might have mentioned this earlier because I think when I walked in, we were talking about sidewalks. It's kind of back down on the lower um, end. But even looking at um, with priority, which I think you all are already doing, is definitely around the schools, um, the areas around the school. If we're looking at those sidewalks, um, because with the school system having to um, cut back on the transportation and you have to be within over a mile of the school um, school where the school resides, then I, you know I know in a lot of areas, uh, I know particularly in, in, uh, in my district, that a lot of kids are having to uh, walk almost in the street or either you know on the grass. And you talk about safety concerns, 
um, as well. And I think that also will play into when we talk about the um, progressiveness of the transit system because those sidewalks are already, you know, being placed and they are serving a dual role with the um, kids and safety and with the um, future of the um, bus and transit system. Very much so. Um, sidewalk, I wish we could turn back the dial about 30 years around here and implement sidewalk as a requirement for development. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we can't. Um, about 10 years ago, it was placed in all our codes where new development has to put in sidewalk, residential, commercial, et cetera. Um, it would be easy to go along the road and handle the whole thing. We, we don't have the funding to do that, obviously, without the SWAS program in certain areas. So at times it's piecemeal together. When this development comes in, when this one comes in, and then we try to fill in the gaps. Sidewalk is something, um, over the years I've said, we could have a SWAS program on sidewalk. And we still won't fit the needs of this county. The residential areas are, I mean, it, it's just gonna be very difficult to get there. The arterials, the collectors, the bigger roads, more heavily traveled roads, that's the ones we're trying to get to. Those are the ones where the buses are gonna go on. Those are the ones where you're gonna have the higher need for safety related issues about separating traffic because the, the cars are there and they're moving faster. That's the intent of the road. Um, that's where we're concentrating on. Um, it's it's a lot of people think sidewalk is just a piece of concrete down there. Trust me, it's a whole lot more, and, and sometimes it's harder to implement one of those projects than it is a widening project, um, just because of the intricacies along the way. But I, I, again, the the commissioners have voiced their opinion. We've got to do this. There is no we try. We got to do this, and we are moving towards that. Uh, we still have funding left in our 09 program dedicated for sidewalks. Um, I would like to say, tell me where you want them, <laughs> and we can go deliver them, but tell me where you want them, and we'll get them on our list. Um, but that's something definitely moving into 15, the, um, prominent issue. Uh, with the DOT, because I know I was um, in a, several DOT uh, meetings, and I know one that um, pushed that has been early on when we were down in session. And I, um, I, um, they were saying that it was money that DOT had for sidewalks, and I think with the chairman, expressed strongly was that's fine we can put them up but the sustaining them um, was the uh, if I quote you correctly um, sustaining was the other issue that we want to of maintenance um, of them so um, and I've been seeing a lot of side was yeah I've been doing a great job I did want to make sure I um, told you all that um, but all the work that you're doing representative I also want to share with you <clears throat> we work in conjunction with T&D uh, there's also T spots on the T grant funds that are out there um, Jeff talked specifically about the road sidewalks, but they're also, we look at multimodal trail systems that we try to connect destination spots to one another. So there's the Safe Routes to Schools initiative. There are a lot of grants out there that we're trying to leverage that we don't necessarily just fall on the backs of T&D right. to try to figure out ways, how do we connect our communities together? But there are other ways that we're looking at doing that. So um, as he continues to talk about the trail development system, we are trying to figure out how do we connect these communities or destination spots in the county so that you can find other ways to get around the county opposed to <coughs> just the sidewalks and your major thoroughfares. Okay. Thank you. And I would like to also say, I appreciate the um, website that you put up showing about the teach block. What's the website? The county, the county, the county not the teach block, but the county uh, website. What is it? I'm trying to get you to do a PSA for me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the website, man? Claydensplos, dot com. <laughs> so appreciate you bringing that out. And that's absolutely. If uh, when you leave from here, if you go home, sit around, think of something, go to that website, kick in your idea. We'll still get it out. Any more questions? When will the next meeting? Hasn't been set. Hasn't been set yet. What I've asked each commissioner to do is make sure if they are willing to do so, have a meeting within their district. Uh, if not, then you know, see a lot all over the county. So I do plan on having another one, probably, probably be January sometime for my next one. But I've asked the other four commissioners to please hold one in their districts as well. Uh, the the each city is having one as well. I think the city of Morrow. Where yeah, it's Monday. The, no, it's not Monday. It's the tenth. Where's Glenda? Is it the tenth? At their regular scheduled meeting which is at 7 30 i believe so if you get opportunity and would like to sit in on that they would love to have you uh december 10th 7 30 p.m 
Lovejoy had one about a month ago, and it was a packed house. Yeah. A lot better weather than tonight, of course. And uh, I know Lake City is, they haven't identified their date, but they're planning for after the new year. Yeah, each mayor is committed to having at least one meeting, uh, if not more, within their cities. And it's, it's, folks, it's Clayton County. We're not concerned about these lines. What's, what's good for the city is good for the county. When you go shopping, if you go to the mall and you live in unincorporated Clayton County, you go into the city. Mm -hmm. Why not make all Clayton County great? Why not have all the streets that we can't pave for sidewalks, lighting, aesthetics? Why we can't all have that? It's about working together. And that's what you'll see the, the mayors and I trying to come together with our uh, board and city councils to, to try to push Clayton County for it. At this point, you know, like I said, we've been trampled so much in the past, we got to stop the bleed. We need people to see us for the great county that we are. And this is the time to stand up and say, the time is now. And we're going to make this happen. But we need you to help make it happen. Yes, sir. Back off of that, what you just said about making all the Clayton County great. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've uh, voted on these plots, and we, as citizens, have noticed that there were just certain particular areas in which got enhancements. Mm -hmm. And I could go through the names, but we don't need to go there. And also this uh, Tower Boulevard thing. I mean, I think we poured tons and tons of money in Tower Boulevard, and basically what I see out there is tire shops. I see uh, a bunch of dollar stores and all that kind of stuff. Where do we set moratorium on those types of, of uh, Well, I think they done bought out a lot of stuff anyway in terms of those buildings already being erected. Now, they have a right to operate, especially since they're here now. Now, do we do a moratorium, and I think there might be one already in place, to stop some of that bleeding. Terra Boulevard, it is eyes, let's just say what it is, it's an eyesore right now. Yes. Okay, but we as elected officials, you need to hold us accountable to try to do something in that area. A business has a right to operate. As long as they are operating within the guidelines of code enforcement and the state laws, really not much we can do. But we can try to get with them and work with them and get them to work with us to try to do something with, especially with the aesthetics up and down that roadway. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm when it comes to new businesses, I think we can have more of a say in that and what we are proving. We have another question. What is the drop dead date to have the SPLOST project list finalized and voted on our board? February 4th is what we're looking at right now. We don't, we don't feel we can push it back any further than that. That's the final vote from the board of commissioners. Um, again, looking at Georgia code, they have to do certain steps to call for the election, but that's what we're looking at February 4th. Okay. Will so. that be on the general election in November, or is there a special election? No, vote? May. Now, tentatively, because the, the state legislators have to go into session and vote on that date being set, I believe, for a special election, right? Okay. And that oh. date is looking like it's possibly going to be May 20th or something like that. So once they... The Set primary, it and approve it. Election. Yes, the primary. Right. primary but that would be also be special election day as well. Or is well, it well it's when you can have the special election for the squash the program. Um, go back eight, ten years ago. We we could set an election day whenever we wanted to. The law has changed over the years. Now it's it's really about two times a year, mm -hmm. and you have deadlines you have to meet for notices and all this. So. Um, this is the, it sounds backwards, but we have to have it in May if we want to continue the tax program. If not, it, it goes away and it would have to restart. So you're saying it has to come up in the May ballot? Yes, ma'am. Um, if, it, if it gets, th this is the quagmire, if it gets delayed and say it comes in November, um, what happens is you got to think about how taxes are collected. Um, the Department of Revenue for the state is the one that collects all these taxes. They have to go contact all the businesses, basically re redo all their computers to stop a seven cents sales tax, revert it back to a six. And then if, if we go in November and say the tax starts in July on a quarter basis, then they have to go back to all the businesses and say restart it. So there's a logistical issue there um, on making the tax work. 
that it would be so much better, so much easily, easier for continuity to stay if it is going to be continued to continue it right on the back side of it. Yeah, we don't want a lapse. If you have a lapse, then you have those issues. And then you talk about more calls with having another election outside of your um, traditional primary yes. and um, general election. I have a question. And since we got a state representative in the house here, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, a lot of. I know. Let's I keep know. us blocks related. Well, I, I, y'all got to talk about you know, the May twentieth date. Um, I don't know. Right now, that's just what. That's the date set for the federal election. Like well, the, the um, from the last uh, reading that I saw was initially the federal judge said in June, and um, some of the leadership um, in the state. Um, have gotten together saying that uh, the move it back to the 20th. So they still give enough time because the whole issue was about the military that were op military personnel overseas were not having enough time for, for runoff elections for the absentee ballots to get in. And so the um, state of Georgia was not in compliance. So the federal judge ruled to have it in June. That's why it's not in July, the primary. And so the, um, some parts of the leadership in the state uh, got together about a proposal to give to the state legislators when we get back in session in January to change it to the May the 20th um, date for the primary elections. Now, I know there's been some talk about putting like the county level elections primary on that date too. I know a lot of people don't want to come back to the polls twice in right. the summer. So do you guys do you know if that's do I don't know I haven't I haven't had an inside tip on that part so <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that that's what they're pushing it all of it being one um, holding one election. So to be the federal, which was the initial requirement from the federal judge was to have the federal elections um, done um, in June. And then like I said, with state leadership, some of them got together and said, we'll just move it back to May and have all the elections um, taking place um, in the May, with the May 20th um, primary. So that would include um, the local um, elections, state level elections, and the federal elections. I have a question. Yes. With that being said, how, I kind of know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> um, how will the word actually get out to the, to the voters in Clayton County to be looking for that splash um, to be up, up for us to vote on? Media yeah, Blitz, what we're doing right now, having these meetings, putting it on Channel 23. Those of you who have Comcast, go to Channel 23 as our government access channel and we regularly put events upcoming events on the on the uh tv station uh we do email blasts that's why we got you to sign in with your email i mean newspaper clay news daily is good about uh publishing our upcoming events so there's a number of, of media outlets that we utilize to try to get word out but the most valuable is word of mouth so when you get that information help spread the word so then when you guys talk about it in February, that's when you would compile the list and then out from there. And we we have to do that in open meeting. We have to vote on it. That's the date y'all were talking about for us to vote on, right? So hopefully by the end, I don't know for sure, we might be televising by then. Yes, no, maybe so. Hopefully. Uh, we just got uh, some funding to start streaming our uh, meetings, so we're trying to get that up and going. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> information on to the Board of Education. They well, they voice. do that, don't they? No, they no. do not. And I was one where put put that in the newspaper. The Board of Education does not do live streaming of their board meetings because I asked the question and I was told they don't have the technology in place. Yeah, and that's what we need. And they don't have it out part two. Mm -hmm. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> well, mainly for them is to get uh, community comment. <laughs> so there's a question also to all of us is, what's our preferred method of communication to begin to get information about uh, the SPLOST, about upcoming meetings, about upcoming events, about the push to begin to accept this SPLOST? Remember, after this list is created, there is somewhat of a disconnect where the county cannot fund any type of promotion for that uh, to get that SPLOS passed. That is on us, the citizens, family. Well, now, when, it, when is the committee meeting if somebody wants to go and kind of watch y'all go over some of this stuff? Monday, Monday. It's the second. Is it, the, is it like the consistent? We have a meeting set? scheduled for Monday and the night. What time? Five o'clock 
Five o'clock ball. And that's the commissioner's office? Correct. Currently, I, uh, we are moving in the direction with the citizens committee to try to provide some recommendations to the board in the middle of December. Um, that's the time frame we're, we're looking on. Um, I just want to ask about modes of uh, communication. Correct. I think y'all did a great job with the big signs that are on the different stop signs, you know, right near the uh, intersections. Um, the newspaper, like you um, said, having on the uh, website, and um, uh, and then, like you said, word of mouth. And another one might be even doing some signs and maybe asking some of the businesses if they will post them up um, in their places of business. Um, well, we have that initiative do we not on uh, some well not the businesses themselves but some of the finished product uh, buildings that has been built Glenetta help me out was it some kind of sticker we were going to put together and put it in the windows that this was a SPLOS project they're the same as the sign yeah Okay, but I thought we were talking about doing something that you stick in the window or something not well. I mean to to identify the the building was built with SPLOS funds um, in, in that I like the idea um, if we can partner with some of the businesses to promote these these meetings yeah, the meetings. Um, definitely I know you can't say y'all need to vote yes you need to vote no I know right. that part but to uh, publicize mm -hmm. the meetings and the other suggestion would be also using social media I don't see what any recommendation were made and I tweet about it so it was no recommendation made coming in here hey Good we need point. to use this hash, hashtag Clayton County Splice so, or Clayton Splice and tweet about it while we're sitting here or get on Facebook, LinkedIn and all that. So we definitely should use that. So hashtag I, and you know. I think there's a couple of people in this room that that's gonna right. take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good old CO in the back is just skinning and grinning because she's hit me twice since I've been sitting up here. But uh yes, thank you for that most definitely. Okay. Any other concerns? This is our time. They can't leave until we ask them to leave. Um, Hopefully, that's what well, that lady back there. Right? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. What is the hashtag? No, there is not one. Has it? Yeah, there's no one. Clayton County GA and Clayton Spots. Everybody got that? But let me pick it back off, uh, Representative here. Uh, community partners play a vital, major role here. And that's why, again, I appreciate Ms. Miller for uh, allowing us to use this facility. But yes, I don't really care to have these type of meetings in government facilities. We need to give our community partners and have it in, at their locations. So that's absolutely the right direction, in my opinion, to go in. Make, make our community partners a larger part of this initiative. I have another suggestion. Keep on going back to technology. Um, is even maybe have it uh, where they can be live streaming uh, with Twitter um, feed, with a Twitter feed, so that, you know, it might be some people that don't want to raise their hand in the audience, but mm -hmm. I tweet a question, oh, I can't make it, and tweet I know if they're having a meeting, they can tweet my suggestion in or whatever the case might be. Okay. Cool. Can I do something on that? We yes. can do the, the live tweeting on this one. However, we did put out a link on the county's website and we sent it out in the email marketing blast. Okay. So if you couldn't make the meeting and you wanted to send in some type of question, you could send it to the suggestion form and we would have asked it here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any others? In the back. Do we have anything? Well, that's, that seems like the conclusion. First of all, let's think, thank our county officials. Oh, go ahead. Hold on. We got another suggestion. <laughs> uh, it's maybe um, a way to um, include the school system is maybe see if we can um, have one of the classes maybe write, um, do an essay or something about why they think the supplies um, would be important for our community or the community and maybe do a um, some kind of award or something at one of the, the last that community. Would look like we, we are encouraging it. As okay. The government. We okay. Well, that. I like the idea because okay. you're using the babies. You're going after that sympathetic mother. <laughs> but I'm just thinking but, about uh, trying to get out well, uh, uh, some ideas about splice. I don't know what the now that would look like. We're having about. But know, as far as if you did it, mm -hmm. that's within your right. But as far as the county government, we couldn't we couldn't host that. But if you did it and put it out to the newspaper or something like that, that's your problem. Okay. We all just about everybody in here is a citizen, and we have a right voice our opinion.
you know, floss projects that, that I would like to see. I have a right to say I would like to see that because I am a citizen. But as a elected official, I can't get up here and say I'm right. for it or against it. I got it. So. No. I mean, that's it. Anything else I catch you next <laughs> <No>. time. <laughs> <laughs> or tweet us. There right, you go. I will. <laughs> Let's again thank our county officials for allowing us to more than that county officials, let's thank our citizens for coming Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Especially in this cold and this rain. And being sympathetic to our community, but also being concerned with it, to come and ask these questions. We need to continue to do this. Okay, if we do not ask, if we do not demand, we cannot cry if we do not get. Okay, so let's go forward, let's spread, spread the word, and let's bring a friend to the next one. Doesn't matter where it is. Let's bring someone out. Let's ask the questions. Let's ask the tough questions. Let's tell them what we want in our county to go forward, what we've dreamt about, what we think about this county. We've got very good ideas that have come about. Okay, the farmer's market, uh, Mountain View, technology. These are all entities which we can grow in this county. So we have to begin to continue forward this path. So again, we thank everybody for coming out. Let's wrap up and be warm tonight. All right. Y'all be safe. <laughs>